story. We are seeing human stories, emotional human stories on both sides of this divide today. So it all boils down to a human story. Let's just listen in to those that cries of joy there in Gilad Shalit's hometown in northern Israel as he returned home. Shalom something. Absolutely, the celebrations there in Gilad Shalit's hometown, Mitzbehila, in northern Israel. As he returns home, yes, they, they, they were singing, Welcome home, welcome home, welcome home to Gilad Shalit, that Israeli soldier. Now, I'm not sure, I, I would suppose perhaps that's his, is that his house. We get live pictures coming in there from northern Israel. Gilad Shalit, of course, uh, exchanged for more than 1,000 Palestinian prisoners. They haven't all been right. released yet. We're expecting uh, the other half, more or less, sure. of those prisoners to be released uh, in the next month. I think, it, yeah, a month or two, I think. I, I think the time frame isn't certain yet. Uh, a little more than half of, a little more than half again of what was released today. I think 550 more prisoners are expected to be released. This entire deal was 1,027. Uh, and today we had the 477, if you want to call it the first batch, the first contingent. Um, let's just underscore the fact that the pictures we're seeing now we are, they are these these types of images and these types of scenes are playing out on both sides of the Israeli-Palestinian divide today um, in villages across the West Bank and across Gaza right now. Um, we are having similar scenes, I would imagine. We're not physically there, of course, but from the reports we've been getting on the ground today, similar scenes of jubilation from families that have been waiting as long, and in many cases on the Palestinian side, much longer. There are some prisoners there who were released today who have been in detention, uh, in Israeli detention for decades in some cases. We saw them uh, earlier getting off those buses. They're not young kids anymore, a lot of these guys. They were middle-aged, even older, some of them, and they were, uh, some of them were up to 20, 30 years uh, in detention. So, uh, by To his village, Mitzbehila, scenes of joy there. The crowds waving the Israeli flag and singing, welcome home, welcome home, Gilad Shalit. He had said to um, an Egyptian television uh, earlier today, he, he had believed that this was really a last chance for him, to, uh, for his release. And he wasn't really sure. I mean, he could have, he foresaw perhaps, you know, many more years in captivity, um, a real sense uh, of a window closing. Um, it was now or never, given the tumult, given the upheaval we've seen across the, uh, the Middle East. The, the calculus of the politics has been changing so quickly, and I suppose that's why both sides were willing to accept what is un unarguably a pretty terrible deal for both of them. Indeed, yes, this deal uh, met with a lot, a lot of criticism. On both sides. One person in exchange for more than a thousand. The asymmetry is, is just one aspect of the deal, which says a lot about uh, the entire Middle East. Uh, you know, you look at the numbers there, and that explains a lot about how Middle East politics works uh, when you're talking about the Israeli-Palestinian peace process. Um, but beyond that, this was a deal that for the Israelis, Benjamin Netanyahu took under pressure, enormous pressure from Israeli society who wanted their soldier out. The Israeli army is top priority, has to get its soldiers out, commits itself to freeing soldiers captured on enemy territory. And on the Palestinian side, they would have liked to see a lot more, many more of the thousands who were